Hello and welcome to the C++ Insights YouTube channel. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a C++ trainer offering classes worldwide, on-site or remote. This is my YouTube channel where I use my tool C++ Insights to teach you various topics related to C++. In today's episode, I want to show you a, I would say, very crucial change that C++23 brought us and that one is in range-based for loops. So the example I have here is, I think, a pretty common and simple one. So I have this function forward here, and it's not stood forward, I just named it like that because this is what it's essentially doing. So it takes a const reference val here, being a std list of int, and it returns that val, and the return type here is a const to list of int reference. Whatever you pass in, you get out. This is forwarding um, a value. And then here I have a function get. That one produces me such a list of int. Something that we've seen increasingly being done, um, maybe from other more functional related programming languages, like Python, where you can do this stuff, so you can write a concatenation of function calls in one line. It looks pretty and it works. So we do translate this pattern to C++. And if you do so, then in a range-based for loop, we can say, okay, we call this function forward here and we pass the value of get to it. Assume that it might modify the values or produce something, query the user, doesn't matter. And then we want to iterate over that list that get and forward combined brought us. I'm using auto here because I know what I'm getting back as an integer, so no, yeah, no worries about copying the things here. Now, if I transform this code, I'm in C20 mode right now. You can see the result right here. You can also see that Clang doesn't issue a warning. So everything looks good on the first glance. Transformation shows here. I get this range one thing here that you know from one of the previous episodes how range-based for loops internally work. Since we are beyond C17, we have the begin and end here outside of the for loop itself. And then we see the traditional for loop and inside that the compiler creates this variable e for me. So nothing special going on here seems like great code that works exactly as expected. Yet the truth is it doesn't. And um, the reason for that is how temporaries work. So what get here starts to produce me is a temporary object. Right? I, I cannot grab it, I don't have the address of it, so this classes, classifies a temporary object. I'm passing this temporary object to forward. Forward is fine with that because it takes it by const ref, so the lifetime of this temporary gets extended. And then it returns a const reference back. This is what my range 1 here binds to. So on a first glance, we know that constref extends the lifetime of the object, so we are fine here. We are not. The problem is that constref usually, and this usually applies to everything in C20, extends only the lifetime of the direct object you are getting back. The direct object you are getting back from forward here is a const reference to something else. The problem now is the actual value, the actual object that get produces, it only gets lifetime extended during the call of forward. Once we hit the closing curly brace here, the lifetime extension goes away and so does the temporary object. This extension here then it simply extends the lifetime of a dangling reference. 100% not what you are looking for. And Z++ Insights can help you visualize that if you enable the show object lifetime transformation here and we do the transformation again, 
Then we can see a couple of more things going on here. The previous episode talking about lifetime extension and how the new transformation can help you. I will link you that in the video right here. But back to the topic at hand here. Now we can see the compiler creates this temporary object for us. That always means it's it's an object, right? It's a variable. We usually don't know the name, so I have to come up with some. And if you ever wondered, this is the line number and the column where the temporary object appeared. That way I can create a stable and more or less unique name for this temporary. This temporary then gets fed into the call of forward. And then we have my range one here, which is the const reference of a to list. And now here you can see this is the visualization of the destructor running for this temporary object. So temporary objects are somewhat special in the language. They get destroyed after what we often refer to as the full expression. And the full expression means when the expression ends with usually a semicolon. So this is the destructor call running. And that means in this very moment and after that, range one points to a dangling reference. So whatever you are doing here, it's everything but fine. You can see the rest of the variables getting destroyed after the for loop. So all of them you can use, but the one you're most interested in, sadly, that one doesn't work. Now, what you can do is obviously refactor your code. Uh, C++20 gave you the ability. You can do something like saying you have your well here, you initialize it with the call to get and you're passing well here then. Do the transformation and you should do it the right way. So I say auto here. Now things get better. And then we can see the previous temporary object now is a variable that I gave a name and by that it's no longer temporary object and hence it gets destroyed at the end of the scope. That would work. But maybe this is not a code you want to write or not a code you can't write. I'm using C20's range based for loop with an initializer feature here to even get that done. If you're pre C20, then you only have a chance of, of adding your own scope and putting this variable before the range based for loop. Both options, I would say, are somewhat um, yeah, suboptimal. So what did the C++ standard do for you? Let me switch the C++ standard here. So from 20 to 23. And if I do the transformation again, pardon me, I have to roll this one back here because otherwise it doesn't make sense. So if I do the transformation again in C++ 23 mode, then we can see here is my temporary object again it gets passed to forward. Well, the interesting thing is it gets destroyed in line 28. So after we are finished using it. So this is a very, very special case. And it only applies to this specific scenario. So range based for loops and lifetime extension for temporary objects. These temporary objects in C23 get lifetime extension to the end of the entire range based for loop. So to the end of this entire piece of code here. Means when you hit the closing curly brace of a range based for loop here, then your temporaries get destroyed. And by that you are free from undefined behavior, at least due to that scenario and can write the, let's say, pretty beautiful code that you want to write in the first place. Okay, so I hope this helps you to refactor your code accordingly and maybe this is a good reason for you to push for moving forward to C23 because the behavior I showed you initially, it's, it's a very subtle undefined behavior that uh, might cause you a lot of trouble and simply updating to the latest C++ standard can help you out there. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for the next one. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.